Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. Hope everybody is doing awesome out there today. Hooray. Indeed, we do. As always, thank you guys for being part of the family. Make sure you are subscribed to all the channels. Have that little notification bell clicked. And thank you also for all those that are supporting us over on Patreon. You make all this very possible. Yes, Patreon, Ko-Fi, and everywhere else. Thank you, thank you. You know, we've talked about this before, but maybe we haven't done actual video entirely on this topic. This, there's a study that came out that says you can inherit memories from your ancestors. For Cindy and I, it's kind of a big, yeah, of course. You know, I mean, that's nothing new, but it is new for a lot of people. Uh, our genetic memory, our DNA accessing, uh, even skills, not just memories, but we can access skills from our ancestors. So this study from Emory University on mice showed 100,000 of the grand pups of traumatized mice inherited altered neural circuits. Research on the Holocaust survivors at Mount Sinai Medical School found 60% had gene changes linked to stress and immune function. Our ancestors' experience may shape our behavior and mental health decades or even centuries later. This is part of how a Kali Yuga in some ways perpetuates itself. Also how we have to break the mold. And that's what we are being called to do at this point in time is to break the mold of the Dark Age. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a really interesting thing um, in biofield tuning called the Ancestral River. And that is a type of tuning that puts you in a position to heal the ancestral problems. And I think the number one thing one has to remember when it comes to that is A, you really have to be ready and willing and able because once you go through that river with the tuning fork, you are straightening out that DNA so that means there might be things that go on with you that you might not understand and you have to be willing just to tackle it and take it on and heal it because that could be from great, 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 great grandma or great, great, great grandpa. Um, so these people that I, that I find that are healing that ancestral river are very, very brave. They are very strong. To, to take it on means so much. I mean, not just to you, but all of your ancestors that are hoping to um, fix this energy so that the collective might be able to go up a little bit further in consciousness. So it, it's really a beautiful thing, and, and um, it's something you just have to be ready for, though. Yeah, yeah, there's there's so much that unfortunately the majority of people don't understand by also reconnecting with our ancestors because even if most of us cannot hear them doesn't mean that they can't hear or see or be watching you anytime. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, a lot of times ancestors take a, a great interest in someone in the 3D and they're just very close to you. You know, they might want to right some wrong or help you right a wrong or they might see someone needs help and, and they're there to to assist. So I do see that quite often. Um, you know, the other thing to remember when healing an ancestral river, the entire ancestral lineage is um you really want to focus on yourself so sometimes people ask me well okay well how do i figure out what happened to great grandpa so i can heal that trauma and how do i go about it you don't worry about that at all you do not worry about that if, if something is going on in your life heal what is right there with you right in front of you and in turn this generates healing in the ancestral realm and it also generates healing to your children too i mean that's something for me that's very very important uh for my ancestral dna is i'm healing myself primarily for my children because i know that every little bit of healing that i do is going to be passed to my children but if I, if I just choose not to do any healing, then they're not going to receive much benefit. It is up to them to figure out things. And I, I feel it's just my part. This is what I need to do for my children because we all kind of went through a very, very difficult time. 
Um, but it is one of the most beautiful things that you can do for your, your children and even nieces and nephews and cousins. I mean, it, it, it's just something that somebody, somebody should do in the family. Somebody chooses to do in the family and, um, it's, it's a blessing. So, you know, it, it gets me thinking about Shintoism. Shintoism is kind of a unique, to a degree, um, belief set that comes out of Japan. Um, you know, labeling it Shintoism obviously does make it unique to Japan, but it is it is something that has a belief set that we find in uh, commonality with many different indigenous people's belief sets. Uh, there's no dogma in it. Um, it basically says everything in nature contains kami, or we could say it, it contains the life force. You know, again, these are all the different terms. Um, but one of the things that they do is they set up a lot, they'll set up shrines, and they'll, they'll put out offerings uh, to their ancestors. Uh, what this does, again, when we pray for the dead, it certainly benefits them on the other side. We know this for an absolute fact. Many people do. Anybody that has dive deeply into shamanism or Taoism or perhaps Shintoism uh, or any of the other more indigenous people's belief sets would understand this. Again, when we, when we pray over that food, whatever it is that we eat, and we ask for the blessings for whoever made that possible, um, that is a huge, huge karmic boost to everybody involved so what shintoism has been called uh, by some western authorities is ancestor worship um you know it has no set of codes or anything like that uh there's no you know single definitive god there are the beliefs of many different beings that are maybe a little bit more knowledgeable than we are um, and understand how the universe universe works uh, to a higher degree than we do. So there's many different sorts of um, immortal spirits that are there. And you can call on your ancestors for help. But, I mean, many Native Americans do that and, and it's something we do. In fact, you know, when I was working on uh, doing carpentry, you know, Cindy was telling me to tap into your grandfathers because both of them were very, very mechanically inclined um yeah and and very good hands-on people that they had skills that could benefit me and so i would and 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 i would ask for their guidance and they can guide us again in the western fundamentalist system what they've done is cut us off from everybody and everything but the system itself and and that's exactly what the system intended to do so, you know, I just wanted to bring that up as a little aside here. So when you're talking about epigenetics, which means we can alter our, our DNA, we can, again, DNA is programming. Uh, it really is programming and coding. And we've been turned off. We've had so much of our coding turned off. We could, co we could turn our coding back on. If you have a negative belief set, one in which you feel that your very birth in some way is a, a negative event, I mean, that is so self-destructive from the get-go. This is why we uh, harp on certain fundamentalist mindsets, like the thought that you're born into original sin and that only a blood sacrifice can, can uh, atone for you. And at the root of atonement is the word you know, oneness, one, at one, meant. Yeah, so, no, you know, these these are concepts that have limited humans' progress. They, they, they have limited humans' progress, just like when you go to the DR and you say, what do you think it is, Doc? Well, well, let's run these tests. Well, sorry, you got two months. That is black magic. That's exactly what that is. And it creates an expectation in your mind uh, and again, in many cases, it's not the fault of those that are even giving the prognosis because this is all they've been programmed with. It is programming. It creates that expectation. And then we still have people that defy the odds and have miracles. But I bet you if you looked at the numbers, 
The ones that go outside of the system are the ones that have more miracles. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones who are who are understanding, you know, what they're up against. And they've probably tried the system and it didn't work out very well. But, you know, not only not only that is it black magic to, to tell someone, you know, their fate uh, they they put it in writing you know they put it in writing in your chart so it's like that that those are two out of three really powerful strong manifesting tricks <laughs> of the trade when you're doing some things and you have someone who truly believes it speaking it to you and writing it down and the other thing to do when manifesting and thank God they don't do that, is to burn it and put it out into the ether, put it out into the universe, put it out there into the world. And like Mike said, it's it's all about the programming. It doesn't make them bad. They're trying to do something good, but unfortunately they're following that, that system that they think to be true, which makes it even worse because they really believe it themselves. Yeah, this is a U.S. Army remote viewer. Uh, that says, one difficulty in the study of PSI, psychic functioning and ability, is that it's not only possible to delude oneself into thinking something that isn't true, in some cases it's highly likely, it can happen to anyone. So again, uh, the system can convince us that something's not true and it convince us that something else is true. But the reality is, it's just the opposite. And this, as he says... Uh, it is very likely and, and does happen often, and it can't happen to anyone. It's a matter of the programming. Um, you know, it was, it was a blessing to me to the times I've clearly heard. I think it was my higher self, really, as opposed to the guides. Um, early on, the most clear mentions uh, I ever got was, you do not have to be sick. And for whatever reason, they told me, uh, maybe it's because of everything that went on with my brother, you know, who was diagnosed at five with a brain tumor and, um, you know, lived 11 more years uh, without really abundant health until he died at 16 in the system. The system didn't work for him. And, and I know a lot of people the system did not work for. I know a lot of people that didn't work with the system and are doing better today than they ever have, too. So it should be a wake-up call for all of us. Here you have Dr. Bruce Lipton, who's done so much work on epigenetics. Our perception controls the chemicals our body releases. This connects us with the spiritual reality, which is an, another uh, dimensional reality, a different density, a different frequency uh, that in which we operate. Uh, a mental reality, if you will, he says, thanks to the understanding of this new science, epigenetics, we go from victim to mastery with a choice. The choice is embracing faith and love, but be careful where you put your faith, because if the faith is in stuff that is um, belittling to human potential, uh, that is not going to be something you're going to want to cultivate, because it's it's going to lower the possibility for yourself mm -hmm. you know i mean to put this into uh into motion so that we understand it a little bit better just imagine yourself you know walking along a path and it's a little bit dark and you see something hanging from a tree and lo and behold by golly it looks like a snake and you're just sure that thing is a snake and just feel your body it's like what does your body do and then you get closer and you start to inspect, but you're very, very leery because, gosh, that's a snake. But then when you get really close, you see the reality of it. It's a rope. I mean, and then you can feel your body like go through this big, huge, relaxing thing. So our belief system is so critical. And this is what the controllers know. And this is what we're always trying to teach people is if they can just get a hold of that belief system and they can pretty much do anything they want and which is really really horrible to have evil people in control of our belief system but that's that's kind of what we got now you know who told this aunt he couldn't do this and he's bringing a well flower home for his sweetheart maybe maybe he's going on a date who knows but again we've seen amazing things done there was another um, posts that was talking about a marathon runner it was said that we wouldn't have somebody complete a marathon until 2075 
And it's already happened in two hours. Two hours, that's mind-blowing. 26 miles in two hours. Uh, but it was done by a man from Kenya. We could live lives that are many times longer than the lifespan that we have. It, it's been limited by the control system. Mm -hmm. Indeed it has. So I hope this gave some people some nuggets of wisdom and got things turning and thinking. Uh, this is all stuff that's really helped me on my journey. And we always like to get it out there to help somebody on their path. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.